Hello, welcome back. Uh, so this is a very short presentation before we, we start the actual lecture. So the title of the presentation is A Life Full of Bugs. Um, and we will, I will try to basically uh, present um, two bugs, one from um, our digital lives and one from our physical lives. Um, so I guess most of you recognize um, the face of, of that guy. Uh, so he's one of the co-founders of Google, um, one of the richest guys uh, on earth, I guess, uh, nowadays. So um, there was an employee uh, of Google uh, that one night he he started messing around with the product and he went on in one of these um, sites where you can search for free domains and he typed in google.com and to his surprise, um, that website uh, showed that the domain google.com was available and it wasn't just an error so basically uh, in the beginning he thought that it was a, some kind of error but he could actually complete a checkout and the result and he did it so the result was that he managed to buy google.com domain for $12 right uh, now after one minute of purchase he received uh, okay he received some internal information via email and he could even access the webmasters console just for one minute because after that basically um, Google somehow automatically took back uh, the domain from him and he immediately refunded him so what I want to say is that okay the bug the problem was identified immediately and Google acted uh, you know quite uh, timely and, and they got back uh, the domain however when Google was asked a representative said that they have been looking into the issue but they haven't noticed anything unusual right so they know that there was a bug somewhere uh, a bug that allowed um, someone to buy uh, google.com for $12, but they couldn't identify uh, exactly the source of the bug. Now, this is not the first story that we have seen something similar. In Back in 2003, I think, um, it was Microsoft that uh, had a similar issue with the domain hotmail.co.uk, where uh, someone was able to buy the domain. Uh, and that case was a bit more difficult for Microsoft because in order to get back the domain, they had to ask um, the buyer, basically. Okay, so they couldn't do it automatically. Mm -hmm. uh, so bugs can can basically uh, create strange situations, right? Now let's see um, some bugs from real life, right, and security in real life. So when I was again a story uh, from when I from the time I was living in London. So at some point, a friend of mine called me and he told me that you know there is an event. Um, tasting wine event uh, where um, you, you, you can try uh, different wines and basically you can drink as much as you want. The thing is that in order to enter that event, uh, you had to pay an entrance. Uh, however, I don't really like wine, even though I come from Greece, uh, it's not, yeah, I, I don't like wine, right? So um, there is no way that I would pay for something that I wouldn't enjoy. Um, so I thought that, okay, uh, maybe I can go there and see what I can do, right? So if you, in order to, in order to enter the, that event, uh, there was a protocol that had to take place between two parties, right? The lady at the ticket booth, uh, and myself was asking for a ticket, right? So the, the, the protocol is, was running like that. So, hello, can I have a ticket basically to enter, uh, the, the, the event? Uh, then the lady would ask me for, I know, 20 pounds or something. Uh, I give her the money and then uh, the last step of the protocol is that she gives me the ticket and by having the ticket, I can enter uh, into the event, right? So I was thinking, how can I bypass this, right? So one way is to create a fake ticket, but first of all, I didn't know how a ticket looked like. Um, but apart from that, I didn't have any tools that would allow me on me that would allow me to to create a fake ticket, right? So I had to find out a let's say more direct way. So what I thought is that um, a possible solution to this would be to in order to bypass the overall security of the protocol, let's say, is to just uh, walk in 
without even looking at the lady uh, who was sitting in the booth. Okay, uh, the idea behind this is that if that lady was seeing someone walking in directly without asking for a ticket or showing any ticket, uh, anyway, if she sees someone walking in with quite a confidence, uh, she would either think that, okay, it's someone that was already in, or um, she would just be shy to ask me if I've got a ticket, right? And that's what exactly happened. So I just walked in, no one, I, I never looked at her, <laughs> she never stopped me, no one stopped me, and then I was uh, basically able to get my free admission. Now, even if she asked me for something, I already had thought my, my, my answer. I mean, the only question that she could uh, ask me is, where are you going or do you have a ticket or something like that? So um, my reply would be, yeah, I just went out either to make a call or have a smoke or something, right? So, uh, but in a fiscal way. So what I want to say with this example is that uh, people in real life tend to be like software bugs. It's just a matter of exploitation, right? So I'm not saying that you should uh, try this, uh, but anyway, this was most, I mean, this, this example summarizes my life in London. It was just an act of survival. Uh, okay, thanks a lot. Uh, see you later.